Welcome to Dawi, a channel where we discuss architecture, fashion, design, music and the arts. I'm Chine Chukuka and like I said, welcome to Dawi. Just imagine, an Africa from your perspective, our perspective, an Africa designed for us, by us. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. How you doing? The extra, the extraordinary entrepreneurial, Carlos. How you doing, my brother? You know, that's a funny thing. That's the time that you prove that if you're an entrepreneur or not. Yeah. This is the time. Yeah. This yeah. is the time. And you know, it's, actually, it's actually very hard because of this whole corona thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. True that. True that. Yeah. Let me just put a little bit louder on my side. No problem. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Cool, man. So, how you been doing, brother? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Hey, bro. You know, I've just been, I've just been pushing. You know, just doing my my own things on the side as well, man. You know, you know the usual, man. But but yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but everything has been quite good, actually, man. It's been quite good. Obviously, the whole lockdown thing has been has been quite a drastic thing for everybody, you know. Hey, it bro. has. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but let's get let's get straight into the into the whole um into the whole business, right? So, can you please just give us like a background view of actually what your business is about, and who is Carlos, and what is Carlos Cocktails business about? All right. So, for those who don't know, my name is Carlos Picara, a young hustler, entrepreneur from Angola, but I live in Cape Town for ten years now. Yeah. It's basically my home. And after my course of hospitality, I got some inspiration to start up my own business of mobile bars, yeah. where we specialize in catering cocktails and mocktails to birthday parties, uh, get togethers, weddings, markets, corporate events. So basically, wherever you're having a party, we provide the bars, bartenders, and mix cocktails to your satisfaction, as the slogan says. Yeah. So, so now, bro, what made you actually want to start it? Like, what made you want to start the whole? There's two versions of the story. There's two reasons. I mean, yeah. there's two reasons for for the startup of the business. The first reason is like the love that you have for hospitality, you know. Sure. And then you find out that you're good at something, and you kind of want to grow with that. You want to develop. And yeah. the second reason, which is the most sensitive reason, it's money, freedom. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So reach to a stage in your life where you can't depend on your parents anymore like growing up yeah. you know and then you want to be independent you want to do all those things so i started selling my bartending services as my like income yeah you know yeah so people really enjoy the service of me like bartending people keep on calling me randomly yo i saw you bartending to the other party can you come <laughs> to this party yeah. so yeah. people start calling me the cocktail guy the yeah. south african people as I said previously, I'm from Angola, and the Angolan people would call me Widush Cocktail, which is basically translating the cocktail guy. Sure. So then I was like, "That's that. This is branding, you know. Yeah. This is like so, branding." So, like, how 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 different has it been for you to be able to to do it here or there? Like, instead, there's a difference in in the sort sort of like consumers in South Africa, and there's a difference in consumers in Angola, or there is nothing like that actually. No, but what I mean is like, we also have an Angolan community in South Africa. Sure, sure. You know, so I used to, I, I still do. Now, now we stop for the lockdown. The events used to be South African events, Angolan events. Oh, so yeah. there was two markets that I'm serving. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. But also I've done in Angola as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good, man. So, so, be, so in terms of um the challenge for you to be able to 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 start off the business what did you what did you do where did you get the money to actually start it like where did you get the like where did you get the the cast not even not even like yeah the guts actually to even you know be like you know what i'm pushing this and this is what i want to do well i have to be very grateful that i have very nice friends at, at the beginning yeah. shout out to theo ruben benjamin the gift Shout out to all of them. You know, they really helped me big time. So it started as like me just selling bartending services. So most of the parties 
or events, they would have the equipment already. And I'm just there to sell my services and they will pay me. Wow. So they kind of allow me to save up, mm. you know. I remember it was my birthday and I had a birthday gift. It was a cocktail set, like my own mini material. <laughs> yeah. <And> I was like, <laughs> my own mini material, like a shaker, a jigger and all that. It was like, okay, this is a start. Mm. And that's how I'm going to begin with it, you know. And then I was making money and I was saving up. like make this little profit and then invest, reinvest mm-hmm. all the time. Yes, yes, yes. And then, and then like ask friends for like small money. Let's just say, yo, can you please borrow me 200? Can you please borrow me 300? Like they, 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 they. Make, pay them back, make, reinvest, make sure that I have everything together, like my whole equipment. And then start branding into shirts. And eventually just became a whole like business, you know? Yeah. A whole structure just building like bit by bit, small, 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 small. So, and are you, are you the one that's basically running the whole business alone? Or do you have people that are in charge of different aspects like marketing? Do you have people that are, are in charge of controlling the money? Or are you the one that's basically running it solely? Yeah, basically that. Are you the yes, one? Yes, that? yes. I'm the one, I'm the one who runs everything in the business. When it comes to HR, like who's going to work with me, mm. marketing. Marketing, I have very good idea, people that like give me good suggestions, but I like to keep it like personal in a way as well. But because it's your brand and you know how it should be. Sure. And finances, I'm still in that. Sure. But when it comes of doing the work as a teamwork, then I've got people that work with me. Okay, that's good. That's good, my brother. Okay, so what is your your end goal, or rather, your vision to actually expand the business, bro? My uh, my number one goal is to have like you know, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sure. And I'm fully booked, and I'm I don't mean fully booked because I have to go to these events, but I mean fully booked by like different events. Sure. You know. Sure. People are calling me in Johannesburg. People are calling me in Cape Town. And I've got a team there. I've got a team in Cape Town. In Cape Town, there's a party in Tablefield. There's a party in Big Bay. There's a party in Camps Bay. Johannesburg, we're there in Santon. You know, like mm-hmm. Bedfordville. Different locations, which is Carlos's Cocktails catering to all these events, different events. Mm-hmm. And then able to, you know, be an influencer when it comes to the hospitality. Sure. Like you're creating trends. Sure. Sure. And from your, from your side, like what is the biggest, biggest challenge that you can sort of advise anybody that wants to go into this line of, of work? Of work? Do you mean like in hospitality or any type of work? Um, in this one specifically, in, in your kind of cocktail business, what is the biggest challenge that you face that you can advise people that are coming, you know, from... Well, and in I think of- that... What I would say is that when you start the catering business, um, people always think there's no market for it, you sure. know? So they will say, ah, dude, like this, the cocktails thing, bro, what is this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, they'll, 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 they'll tell you things like that. But then if you really want to be in that, you got to study the game. Because think with me, people love drinking. Like think about the lockdown, yeah. what happened now. Bro, when yeah. they heard the restrictions are getting left, the yeah. you know, people were celebrating. <laughs> you know, people are celebrating. Oh, level three, <laughs> first of June. <laughs> so people love drinking. So it's a business that can never go wrong if you know your strategy well. It takes a bit of time until you know your market well, until you know what people want. But if you put a dedication into it, be like, which, where are the areas where people have party the most sure. that's where you go at the ice be like yo that's what we do blah, 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 blah. go try to network with events companies because yeah. a lot of people are scared to ask the big guys for advice because sure. this is competition but like i realized in hospitality people actually help each other with that yeah, yeah that's what yeah. Yeah, these are my steps and i'm sure in different industries people also help if you use the right words and if your attitude is like a good attitude, you know, yes. be like, yo, be humble with yourself. This is where I am. This is where I want to be. I want to be like you. You know, have the power to network, basically. Yeah. yeah. And and what makes your one different? 
like what makes oh. Carlos is one different. What makes yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to brag or anything, right? Yeah. But let's just say people really enjoy my personality. Sure. Right? Also being a bit different from not being from the country. Sure. So yeah. I feel like I've been I bring that hospitality from Angola that is able to combine with the services in South Africa. So that kind of is very different. Like I like to, even if I'm in an event and I'm not doing the cocktails, I like to hug the people like, hey, man, come, come. come. <laughs> and, you, and you are a hugger, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and also the cocktails are great bro yeah like the cocktails, I, I make sure that i take my time when i'm doing the preparation because like you, you need to do the prep yeah. before you go to the events yeah. i make sure that i take my time to get the fresh fruits make natural juice so it tastes different because you go to some bars some cocktails you can feel like it's blend juice Ooh. and the mixture is not pure you know so i take my time and make my own syrups as well Wow, you make your own soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For wow. the flavor to be your So people drink is like, what am I drinking? Oh, this <laughs> wow. more yeah. tastes different. Oh wow! And so, so tell me about that process of making your own soup. Like, um, okay, you don't you don't need to give me like, yay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 definitely, definitely. Okay. <laughs> nah, let's keep it at that. Let's keep it at that. Let's keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay cool man so so yeah man so in terms of 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 the business is there any way that you're going to collaborate is there any possibility of you collaborating with other people or no not really is it that not that type of business that gives you the ground what do you, when you mean collaborating do you mean like um work with different companies yeah work with different companies or I've I've done that. I've I've done that. That you actually worked with me once. Shout out to you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which was a, a company that we had a contract. Let's just say um, every single event that the company has a company company, we are there. We are the ones who are catering. Mm. But when it comes to collaborating with different, I feel like I would like to collaborate with different brands. Let's just mm. say with Sky Vodka, for example. Yes. If yes. Sky Vodka has to develop a new uh, a new spirit, for example, yes. I'm the one who makes the introduction, uh, the cocktails for them, so then they expose they in, like show to different target markets. You know. Wow. Wow. And then, so tell me about the contract um, part of the business because it becomes very crucial to understand how contract works. To understand, okay. yes, yes. So please explain that process for anybody that needs to. Be, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've done. Well, what I'd say three type, three different types of con- two types of contracts, right? Yeah. So the the corporate ones, the ones that they want you to be with them in every single event. So you do like, okay, how many events do you have a year, right? They'll tell you, okay. We have this event for, to, for example, today's Africa Day. If we're in lockdown, some companies, they would like to have an event for Africa's Day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they have an event for this day, event for New Year's party, event for Christmas. So this company has three. So they do a fixed contract with me. Okay, for these three events, I want you. And they do the payment up front already. So there's one type of contract. So then it's fixed, you know, you know what to expect and all that. So then... The other ones are different, which like we have to kind of play, we have to force ourselves to advertise as much, so then you get the client. So people contact me in advance, let's say two weeks, or oh, I have a wedding. Um, in one month, I've got a wedding going on. So it's just a bit different. This ones, you have to be very careful with them. You have to say, um, you have to like, have consultations with them, go in like different meetings and all that, make sure that you follow up. Because some of them, they, they do the contract with, with you, right? Yeah. They pay like half, but then they cancel. Oh, wow. Is there any cancellation fee that people can, can put as a clause like, of the contract? Or? Yeah, for me, like I'm nice enough. I give people like two weeks in advance to cancel, you know. <laughs> but like... <laughs> but like... It's just say if your event is tomorrow and then you cancel, I'm sorry. Like, come on. Not you maybe prepare the whole week. That's also work. 
Wow. That's what people don't understand. Work is not exactly when you you are at the event. It's not at the beginning. It's not, it's a process. It's, to get it's to a the whole process. Event. Because yeah. we need to check, like, in a week, okay, let's just say this person has an event with me on Saturday, and I've got an event on Friday, and I've got an event on Sunday. You have this whole week to prepare for this weekend, sure. and you have this person in mind, okay, I'm going to work with two people for this event, I need to buy this, 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 this specific drinks, because customers, they mean clients, they quite picky. I want these three cocktails, please. You know, they <laughs> want that. Mojito, martini, you know, and a whiskey sour, for example. And you tell, you have to please them. You got to do what they ask. Mm. Mm. Client is always right. Wow. And what is the biggest misconception that you could say could be about this whole entire business? What, what is the biggest misconception? Ooh, makes me, cause, uh, la, 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 let me just see. Uh... Of okay, it. one could be like people could think that it's very easy, but it's not it's that easy. It's just a matter of understanding, you know, what it takes for you to be able to prepare for one event. You know, that could be a mistake. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. People think people think it's just as as I said before. People think it's just like going there and serve. Yeah, but yeah. A- they, don't, they don't understand. The, like, let's say, okay. This weekend, there's only one event. It's a bad season. It's winter, and there's only one event, right? And if this person has got 80 people, they think these people, they're just going to drink. Because some people, they do deals with me like, okay, I just want cocktails. I don't want anything else. Because I also serve like full bar operation, right? They say I'm going to bring the beers, the wines, the whiskey. And some people just want specifically cocktails. So this person will tell me, okay, this client will tell me, okay, I just want your cocktails so make me a fair price, a fair quotation, because I'm going to bring my own booze. And I know, I know, this is a very misconception because I know these people are going to end up drinking cocktails more than their own <laughs> beers, more than their own whiskey. So yeah. then I'll give them a price that I know already that's what's going to happen. And they try to negotiate with me, but no, I'm going to bring my own things, I'm going to bring my own things, la, la, la. And then it doesn't happen like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen like that. The other, the other, the other thing that I would say is when they see me making the cocktails, like because you, obviously you prep and you're quick, and they think it's easy. Mm. Mm. It's mm. easy to make. Mm. It's not really easy to make, you know. Wow. Because wow. obviously, if you're in that business, you make it look easy because it took you a long time to learn that skill. Wow. Wow. And for people that want to obviously get into it, you said that they should look up in learning the hospitality business. And what other things would you say that, that you would advise people to be able to, to, to step into, into what you're doing? Well, for sure, when I started, I didn't have any financial education. Sure. Honestly speaking, sure. if you want to start up a business, no matter what concept you're bringing, can be amazing, can be cool, unique. But if your finances is not going all right, then you're not, not in business. You're doing for passion, you know. When I started, I would say I was doing for passion. But then you have to understand the principles of being financial educated. Wow. You know, like, see what, where your money is going, where your money is coming from, wow. where are your seasons, where you, your, your peak seasons, you know. Mm able to know, okay, I can profit from that much if I charge that much, yes. be able to see like the pay. If I pay uh, two employees, that's how much I need to pay myself. Wow. So those things, you need to have these things in order. Like when I mean in order, I mean in order. <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah, because I made mistakes like, let's just say I get paid and I'm spending already, but this money could be used to reinvest for your company to grow, you know? So you need to have two accounts. When you start your sole trader, you know? You're a sole trader, you are your own business, a self-employed, if you can call it that. But you need to have two accounts where you put the money for the business and where you pay yourself. Or some of the times you don't even pay yourself because you still want to grow a little bit, you know? Or the company still needs to grow a little bit. So these are the principles that somebody that is starting up and wants to, not just hospitality, any business needs to have. 
financial and the ability to market yourself. Mm. One thing, one mistake that I made is like, I didn't like to sound like I'm too pushy, like, like I'm selling a product. But at the end of the day, you need to sell your product. <laughs> That's true. You need to market, you need to market yourself. Yeah. You need to, you really, really need to market yourself. Like use social media very wisely. Uh, business cards still work. It does. It, when you're speaking to somebody and yeah. you're like, this is my business card. You look professional when you do that. Yes. Oh, you got a business card. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, brother, um, for me, I, I won't lie. It's been a very, very, very beautiful, very beautiful conversation talking about your oh, thanks, man. Um, and I really hope that you that you grow and become even bigger, you know, in the near future. Um, but before yeah. I go, I just wanted to ask you, in terms of this whole lockdown, how have you been able to sort of keep customers um, interested in your business and what have you been able to do in terms of like cash flow and stuff like that? Because a lot of businesses have been affected by it. A lot, a lot, a lot. It's a very sensitive situation that we're all living at the moment, especially yeah. us in hospitality business. It's not easy at all. Sure. Um, one strategy, because like I had to do a lot of research because the beginning was like a break that was like, yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell is going to happen? Yeah. So I came up with like alternatives of like at the moment what I need to do is to push the brand consistency. Wow. Well, what I mean by that is don't stop marketing yourself still and creating content in a way that you like. I use my Instagram page is the one that um, I create the content. You know, like the one that I see that people actually follow up. Sure. So keep on posting all the time. Keep on doing like lives on how to make cocktails that people can do it at home and i realized that i had feedbacks people were like oh you don't have any alcohol are you making this lies what are you gonna do so then i i changed i changed and i was like okay let me make some smoothies so people can actually do it at home and now with the lockdown what do you kind of like gotta do is keep your customers your loyal customers you know send them like emails like follow up so like interesting articles so when this whole thing finishes you still they still have you in mind you know sure. you're like they sure. want to celebrate when this whole thing is finished and they're going to celebrate with what with a party with a small get together and they still need people to serve them you know sure. and in terms of cash flow what like you can do for hospitality is very 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 limited at the moment sure. so i decided to do some deliveries you know sure. deliveries like smoothies sure. you can like do some deliveries at home and I had to come out of my comfortable zone, which is a plan that is coming up now where we have to like do snacks, like let's just say smoothies and burgers, smoothies and uh, chicken mayos. And it's an alternative. So then you can push it, you know? Wow. Wow, man. Um, again, man, it's been, it's been, it's been a pleasure, brother. It's been a pleasure. So where can people find you? And yeah, where can people find you basically? They can just follow the page, Carlos Cocktails, very, 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 very easy. Carlos Cocktails together on Instagram, Facebook, I mean there. Wow, man. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for taking the time out, man. No, thank you so much for that time. I really appreciate it. Hey, cheers, brother. Hope you safe. Okay. Wash your hands. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm so distant, bro. You guys to <laughs> Shut up, brother. Um, so <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.